It's now 27th of December and I'm writing a piece for the RTVE Orchestra in Madrid for trumpet, trombone and orchestra. I have absolutely no idea what's going to come out. Right now I'm trying to keep my head completely open for everything. It's a blank page. It's like I'm still enjoying the freedom of not having to choose anything. So landscape is completely open. Once I've started to make one embryo, already the critic on me comes in and sort of start to say, is it good enough? Is it good enough? But right now I don't even have to think if it's good enough because there is nothing yet. When I compose, I compose in four stages. Each piece I would spend approximately one year to compose. First stage of about two months, one to two months, is a completely free stage where I let myself just put ideas on paper or in a computer. 24 different ideas that I produce and then explore. And I'll try to find which ones of these 24 embryos has a possibility to survive. The embryo is like an idea, just an idea. It could be 15 seconds, it could be five seconds, it could be 20 seconds. It could be one line, it could be a series of chords, something that might become a bigger piece. I name them and I listen back to them, taking away the ones that doesn't have enough personality. I'm left with six of them. These six I save in one program where I make the orchestration. I set up a form of the piece whether it's going to be concert ending or a quiet ending or whatever happens. I sort of set up a frame for the piece. And then I start composing only in Particel. This is like the second stage. And this second stage is usually like five to six months sometimes. And I divide these six months in 10 second periods every day. So I try to keep from doing more than 10 seconds a day, but I also try to keep from doing less than 10 seconds a day. And then slowly it builds up. And over these six months, I have created something. I'm not always super happy about it. I reflect on a daily basis on this. Then after, after these five to six months, I go back again and starting the orchestration. I do the same thing, 10 seconds per day, not more. It's very difficult to keep myself from going ahead, but going too fast very easily makes it less substantial. Once I'm at the end of that comes the fourth and in one way the most difficult part, because then it's like proofreading checking that everything is okay. And when you know the piece so well in your head, you get blind, you don't see the details, you don't see the mistakes you've done. So that's the full process, usually takes one year. I'm just about to start writing my first embryo. I am uh, a bit nervous. Uh, I don't really know what to write. We'll see. I mean, I'm going to spend now about an hour here trying to get something out of my brain. We'll see what happens. Here is embryo number one. Whether it's good or not, I don't know and I don't care. I just, uh, this is what it's, what came out.
So that's a little idea. Maybe it can be useful. This is one out of 24. It will grow or it will die away. Welcome to my Moroccan sauna. Creativity is something that is built in naturally, I think, in every human being. And you can s specifically see it on children from around two years up to five years. When they are playing, it's like the creativity is enormous and their brains are so receptive. Immediately when you become aware of success, around when you're seven or eight or nine or start school and want to become something, then it's, it's very difficult to keep your creativity. But it's not impossible to get back to that creativity of a five-year-old. I have now been working on it for a little bit over a month. I've written four embryos. Here comes the second one. Always when I start a composition, I try to get back to that feeling when I was five. For me, it is like when I see the sky, music comes into my head. I see this and I transform it into music. And that's a very strange thing because it's like association. So I would maybe associate that gray and all these colors with a, a bass trombone playing something very fat and melancholic. And then I see that tree, and it's like a flute with a trill. I guess it's all from nature. I guess it all comes from nature. But nature also, and also human relationships and, and human beings. <laughs> When I don't get ideas, it never happened to me. <laughs> ideas always come. My problem is to contain them. There's always, when I sit down, there's always something coming. It's like when a four-year-old gets a pen and a paper, he will write whatever comes out. Maybe when you're seven or eight, you hesitate because you feel you have to create something good. Panic! Embryo number 16. We'll see, maybe I use it for another piece. Coming later on. Recycling, you could call it. If you can get rid of that feeling of having to create something good, just sit down and create. It, let it be terrible. Let it be boring. Let the result be terrible and look at it. Oh, that was bad. I throw it away. When these 24 are done, I throw them away, some of them. But some of the days, there is an embryo that has this enormous inspiration. So that's a good day. And if six days out of 24 is good, then you have a good piece. First of all, when starting something, don't be afraid of the blank sheet. Enjoy the blank sheet. When you start a piece, enjoy the fact that you are totally free of putting whatever you like in there. Once you start, allow yourself to make bad music. Allow yourself to experiment with bad, good, 
ugly, beautiful, interesting, boring. Allow everything at the first stage of a composition. But give yourself a frame, a time frame, like I do with the, with the one month. Just once that is gone, go on. Find your good spots of this that you have created. And then discipline is important. Time-wise, limit yourself. Say to yourself, this is my time only for composing. Set out an hour or two, but make sure you're undisturbed. And once you're working, you're working only with this. Once the time is out, leave it. If nothing comes out, don't be frustrated. Next day it will. And finally, like, make sure you have enough time so you don't get under time pressure towards the end of a compos composition because that almost always creates in a bad piece in the end. And then the third embryo. I would say complete freedom combined with total discipline and don't try to create the world's greatest peace. And then the fourth embryo? Because you can't. <laughs> and also be open-minded to the fact that you can fail. So, this is for that time. I say that I have never problem with creating. I say I don't have blocks. But of course, within me is the fear of that. Every time I sit, I of course look at and it and say, oh my God, this is terrible, this is terrible. I threw it out. No, 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 it's not good. I have it all the time. I have it all the time, but it never blocks me. And it should never. I'm okay with the fact that if I fail, I can still accept myself as a human being. If you have so much pressure that if you fail with a piece, that's the end of your personality then I think you can get blocked. If you demand of yourself to create a masterpiece, it puts a lot of pressure on you. But if you just compose and see and say, well, maybe it's going to be a failure, total failure. Okay, we'll see. Maybe it'll be an average piece, but maybe, maybe it'll be a masterpiece. If you have those three scenarios available to you and don't block them, one of them. Don't block the, the fiasco scenario out of your system because then you will always compose safe. And if you block, even block the mediocre thing, if you can't stand writing a mediocre piece, I mean, you, your pressure on yourself will be so tough that you cannot create. But it's a, this is my, my personal experiences and this is the way I handled it. What came out was my music and some people might like it, some people might hate it, some people might look at me and say no I'm not going that way I'm going my own way. Some people might say yes I agree there are some things there that I can take from his experience and then I'm of course very happy to have been helping people but also it's important to to look at me and say no that's not for me I'm a different person every person is individual and I think everyone has his own stars to follow that's important I think So this was the last chapter of my series 
Seven Pillars. I did this series because I wanted to share with you, my viewers, how I became the artist, the human being that I am today, 60 years old. If there are other things you would like me to talk about in my next video, go to the comment section below and tell me what you want to know. I'll try then to answer your questions in the video coming up in the future. Until then, have a great time and best of luck with your goals in life.